Okay, so I thought it'd be a little bit easier if I uh, just demonstrated this in a video rather than uh, in an email. And I think uh, I understand what's going on, and I, all, all I think it is is it's a boundary condition thing. Um, so you can actually set up different types of boundary conditions for the extrusion to ensure that they're point matched. And so that's kind of what I'm going to show you how to do here, as well as kind of the, the whole process for just creating the rotationally periodic domains and then doing the extrusion. And I think that the real key, and I, and I hinted at this before in one of the emails, is you want to create your periodics first before you start doing any inflations on the hub. And so um, what I'm going to do is actually create the rotational periodic and then I'm going to do an entire inflation off of the, the entire hub, not one side and then the other. And I think that's, gonna, that's really going to make this a little bit easier and we can ensure everything is point matched. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my periodic domains. Okay, so we've got three of them in this uh, stripped down example here. So I've selected my periodic domains and I'm going to create periodic rotate. Okay, I'm just going to pick a curve. So I picked the, this curve right here and I entered an angle of 120 degrees earlier so it automatically uh, uses that and then click OK and I've created my rotationally periodic set of domains. Okay, So now you don't have to use the, the GGI interface. Everything is point to point matched on the periodic interfaces. Okay, so now the, the next part is doing the extrusion while using the appropriate boundary conditions for the extrusion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my three hub domains. They're colored in orange. So I've got the two on the top and then the one here on the back. And I'm going to go create, extrude, normal, and go to the boundary conditions tab. And what I'm going to do is they're kind of hard to see, but they're a light green color. You can see these little uh, lines with circles on the end of them. Those represent the boundaries of the face that I'm about to do the extrusion for. So I'm going to select these um, boundaries okay, right here at the base of the hub where they touch the periodics. And I'm going to change the boundary condition type to adjacent grid. So this is how you're going to get the extrusion to be point matched to the periodic interfaces. Okay, so we'll do adjacent grid. Now it's saying grid selection and it wants me to select some uh, grid entities that I want to constrain the extrusion to. So I'm going to go begin and I want to constrain that extrusion to these quad domains on either periodic surface. Okay, so I'm going to select those. All right, and then I'm going to say end and set boundary condition. So now when I do the extrusion, it's going to be constrained to those quad domains and they'll be point matched. All right. And I still need to do the same thing up here. There's another boundary. So it's up here at the base of the blade. So select those boundaries and go adjacent grid, begin. And then there's some domains down here right at the base of the blade. I'm going to select Okay, those four domains and say end and set boundary condition. So now the extrusion will be constrained and it will march along those domains that I have specified and it'll be point matched. Okay, so now the next step is to go to the attributes tab, specify the step size. You want the step size to be the same that you're using on those periodics, okay? Those those domains that we selected for the adjacent grid BC, you want your initial cell height, your growth rate to be very close to those. Okay, so that would mean we needed an initial delta S of 0.001, a growth rate of 1.2, and then I'm going to run it for 12 steps. Okay? And there you go. Now that extrusion, that prism inflation is point matched to the uh, periodic uh, surfaces. All right. So that's how you go about doing that. The other thing I just want to point out this out really quick is I, I just realized that this grid is uh, being written out to the ANSYS fluent file format. You can see that down here in the bottom left. Um, if you want, you can change that to OpenFoam. I don't know if you've found this uh, or not. If you go to the CAE menu, select solver. Um, you can pick open foam and we'll, it'll basically just ask you where the polymesh directory is. You just dump the files into the polymesh directory or any directory for that matter. It'll, it'll write out like the boundary, the owner, neighbor, um, points files. And then um, 
you can even export things like um, sets and zones, uh, face sets and cell sets, uh, face zones and cell zones. If you wanted to, you can specify those in pointwise and export them as well. All right, so with that, uh, that's basically how you, how you go about doing that. So again, the key is to you do the rotational periodic copy um, to create your two periodics that are point matched, and then you do the extrusion on the hub uh, while using the adjacent grid boundary condition. All right, hope that helps.